Hello. In this video, I will introduce and prove the chain rule for functions with domain and codomain that are subsets of the real numbers. So first of all, I'll introduce what the chain rule actually is. And uh, essentially, it concerns the derivative of the composition of two functions. So the chain rule can be uh, summarized as follows. Uh, let f be a function of, uh, of a domain O and a codomain R, where O is a subset of the real numbers. And let g be another function with domain uh, that is actually the range of f and codomain the real numbers. Um, now, if we were to actually um, sort of minimalize these assumptions, we could, um, in terms of the domain and codomain of f and g, but for the purposes of the proof that that's really not necessary. So we'll define the composition of these two functions g blob f of x as g of f of x uh, for all x in O. So in this case, uh, g blob f is a function, also a function from O to the set of all real numbers. Now, let's actually get to the theorem. The theorem states that if f is differentiable, differentiable at x sub 0 in O, and g is differentiable at f of x sub 0 in the range of f, then g blob f is differentiable at x sub 0 in O, and specifically g blob f dash of x 0 is equal to the derivative of g at f of x 0 multiplied by the derivative of f at x0. So um, often this is written as uh, dy over dx. So often this is written as dy over dx is equal to dy over dp multiplied by dp divided by dx. Now um, the proof presented often, um, which is actually incorrect, is that the dps cancel. And uh, actually, it is not quite correct to say th that the dps cancel without some previous work. So we will not be presenting um, that proof in this video. OK, so let's actually get to the uh, proof of the chain rule. Uh, first of all, there are several assumptions or uh, required knowledge in order to uh, prove the chain rule. Uh, the first piece of knowledge is uh, you should have some understanding of the epsilon delta definition of the limit of a function. Uh, you should know that differentiability uh, implies continuity, or rather, differentiability at a point implies continuity at a point. Um, you should know the simple uh, limit theorems. So that is that the limit 
as x approaches a of f plus g is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f plus the limit as x approaches a of g and similarly for the product of two functions. I apologize for the messy handwriting. Okay, the fourth assumption is that you should understand that the these two definitions which I'll present uh, for the derivative of a function at a point are actually equivalent and it's not too hard to see why. So we say that f is uh, differentiable at x sub 0 if this is true. Um, for some f prime x0, um, or that this limit that this limit exists. So it's not too hard to see that these definitions are indeed equivalent. Okay, so we need these four assumptions and uh, let's begin the proof. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is consider the composition of uh, g and f. So let's call it, um, well, g blob f of x is equal to g of f of x. And we know that g is differentiable at um, f of x0. So g prime of f of x0 exists and f is differentiable at x0, so f prime of x0 exist, exists. Okay. Now, let's, uh, let's just consider the following limit. The limit as h approaches 0 of g blob f of x sub 0 plus h minus g blob f of x0 minus g prime of f of x 0 multiplied by f of x 0 multiplied by h all over h. And remember, we're assuming that um, the uh, two previously mentioned definitions of um, the existence of a, deriv of a derivative at a point are equivalent. So if uh, g blob f, the composition of g and f, is a truly differentiable function, and its derivative is indeed g prime of f of x0 multiplied by f prime of x0, then this limit over here should equal 0. So if, if we can prove that this limit equals 0, then we've proved the chain rule. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is um, make a substitution, which will make things a lot easier for us in the future. So we're going to let k equal to uh, f of x sub 0 plus h minus f of x sub 0, so that um, f of x sub 0 plus h is just equal to f of x sub 0 plus k. Uh, we also need to notice something that is uh, because f is differentiable at x sub 0, uh, f is continuous at x sub 0. And so by definition, the limit as h approaches 0 of k is equal to 0. Okay. And that just goes by the definition of continuity um, of f at x sub 0. All right, so with this substitution, let's rewrite this uh, big term we have. All right, so with our new substitution, this is how our expression uh, looks like. And uh, we're all, from here, we're going to manipulate the expression uh, to make the proof easier again for us. What we're going to do is we're going to introduce uh, in the numerator, um, we're going to introduce g prime of f of x0 
multiplied by k, and we're also going to subtract it. So this is definitely an equivalent expression to the one on top. Okay, things are getting a bit messy now, but hopefully everything will uh, look a lot better in the next step. So we're going to do some factoring. We're just going to uh, factor out um, a g prime f of x sub 0. <clears throat> so we'll have this term, oh, sorry, this term over here minus g f of x zero um, minus g prime f of x zero k plus g prime f of x zero into k minus f prime f of uh, f prime of x zero into h all over um, h. So we can break this limit up and we have limit as h approaches 0 of g of f of x 0 plus k minus g of f of x 0 minus g prime of f of x 0 into k divided by h plus g prime of f of x 0 multiplied by the limit as h approaches 0 of k minus f prime of x0 into h divided by h. But k is really just f of x0 plus h minus f of x0. So we can sub that in. We can sub that back in and we get the following expression. All right. Now, by definition, since f is uh, differentiable at x0, this, ent this whole thing here is actually 0. So we can cancel this entire term and we can only we, we only have to deal with this now. Now this term over here is slightly trickier to deal with. So let's deal with the more uh, complicated expression now. Um, so the expression is g of f of x0 plus k minus g of f of x0 minus g prime of f of x0 into k all over h. So we notice that this expression is just equal to g of f of x0 plus k minus g of f of x0 minus g prime of f of x0 into k divided by k multiplied by k over h because uh, the k's cancel. Now remember we can only do this if k is not equal to 0. Now if k is equal to 0 it gets even easier because the numerator of our expression just becomes g of f of x0 minus g of f of x0 minus 0, which is simply 0 divided by h. So as the numerator is 0, our entire expression becomes 0. So it's not too difficult now to prove that this limit is indeed equal to 0. We can consider both cases. If k is not 0, then our expression is this one over here, which I'll just quickly um, sort of underline or highlight in red. With square brackets. So this is our expression if k is not equal to 0. And we notice that when h tends to 0, because f is, con f is continuous, uh, so if, if, a t if h tends to 0, because f, f is continuous at x0, k tends to 0, and therefore uh, this stuff over here also tends to 0. Because remember, um, g is di uh, differentiable at f of x0. So this stuff here tends to 0, and uh, this stuff here, well, this is just f of x0 plus h minus f of x0 divided by h. This tends to f prime of x0, and so this whole thing tends to 0. Whereas if k is equal to 0, then, well, the entire expression is 0 anyway. So in either case, this entire expression tends to 0. So now we've dealt with this, and it tends to 0, and we already know that the previous expression canceled and it tended to 0, and so we have proved the chain rule. Thank you for watching.